Nina is um, just the sweetest kid. Um, she's very thoughtful. She thinks about um, other people's needs all the time, um, the kind things she can do for them, and um, she loves to read. She read. She can read several chapter books a day. <laughs> she'll just, if you don't stop her, she'll just keep going and going. And um, she just developed this insatiable appetite to learn about cats. We got every cat book from the library and she read them cover to cover multiple times. And when she didn't have any more to get, she was just asking me every day, Mommy, can you teach me more about cats? Can we find more information about cats? Can you get me more books? She just wanted me to constantly give her cat information. And then kind of out of the blue, in the beginning of August, uh, one evening Ada had a pain in her abdomen. And, um, you know, it was different uh, than normal pain, but we didn't think it was anything uh, very bad. Uh, I took her to the pediatrician and he ordered an ultrasound. Um, we were thinking it was probably her gallbladder or something. And um, he called and said, she has a mass on her liver, um, a pretty big one. And uh, we need you to go over to the, see the oncologist today. <laughs> and we were just gobsmacked. She, you know, she's always been a really healthy, active kid. And so we didn't um, expect anything like that. And um, they did a biopsy and found that it was malignant and fairly aggressive. So, um, she started chemo. It's hard to see your child go from being a vibrant, active, happy child to, um, you know, just losing all of that and just kind of lying there for months. She was still there, but it was almost like we couldn't quite access her because she was so um, sedated by the meds and so sick and so tired. She has said for years that she wants to be a cat biologist when she grows up. And so her wish was to be a cat biologist, kind of uh, experience that. We've spent years now in Maine, um, moved from Alaska, but we, we've kind of forgotten what life was like there. We've been kind of in a routine here and then the whole um, kind of tunnel vision of treatment, we're just kind of in a bubble, not seeing many people just routine of treatment and being at home. And going to San Diego was like emerging from that bubble suddenly. And not just the um, emerging from the routine, but just going to San Diego is totally different. You know, the beach and the warm breeze off the ocean. And then seeing the big cats, of course, was Ada's dream. And just suddenly it was becoming real. So it was incredible just to have all those transformations happening at once. And it, the most special thing for me was watching her eyes, you know, as she, you know, I remember her uh, watching uh, the jaguar at the San Diego Zoo come up close to the fence and just, just seeing it through her eyes was special. Way more special than if it had been just me. They had left the jaguar into an enclosed space so they could hide a ball with me inside it. Then the jaguar came out and started acting like the ball had it was full of catnip instead. It was really fun to watch. Make-A-Wish did all the work for us. So you recognize that they opened the doors, you know, the, the behind the scenes access at the zoo and the special enrichment activities. They made all that possible in the first place. And then they made it possible mentally to just focus on Ada and her enjoyment of it and not have to stress about the details, the daily details. So after the long tunnel of treatment, it just feel like, it feels like light, you know, coming in. <laughs> so a lot of gratitude. It just meant so much for us to see her coming alive and being herself again.